فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم ولذلك عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه he said <coughs> that one of us would see a sin uh, as though he was under a mountain fearful that the mountain may fall on him that's how we saw the sin how big it was But he said that the fadir, the transgressor, the criminal, he doesn't see the sin except that he perceives it as though it's like a fly that comes and it descends on his nose and he removes it with his hand like this. In other words, for him the sin is nothing, no weight. And the Prophet وسلم, he told us, Stay away from the belittled sins. And that's common. I would think to myself that the Salaf, rahimahumullah jami'an, the sins that they may have belittled or those that which was belittled in their eyes were the minor sins. For us today, the major sins are belittled. The kaba'ir, the major sins, the muhlikat, the ones that the Prophet, the Prophet, the ones that the Prophet has said, sab'a al-mubiqat, qalu wa mahunna ya Rasulullah, what are the sevens that would dip you into the hellfire? We find a lot of the Muslims who belittle those ones. Ashirku billah, wallahi it belittled. Ashirk and its importance and how serious it is, it is mocked and it's taken as a joke. Killing an innocent black person today, it's seen very lightly. Riba is seen lightly. Khamar is seen lightly. Zina, adultery and fornication. Have you not seen that? He comes and he talks about it. And he boasts about having to spoke, spoken to a girl. Look at the emails that come through, people asking questions. Like it's the fear of zina is really little. A few today stood up and said to people, you know, even sometimes when I get uh, sad by people's dealings with zina, uh, how they lightly that they see it, people say to me, Achi, you, you really don't understand. This is light, this is minor now. Nah, it's nothing. Is is that's that's basics, that's simple. But we're talking about worse now. So it's very sad. And all of that starts off from a particular point. We always say that Shaitan's dealings is khutwat. It's not to take you one time, throw you into the deep end. Shaitan starts off slow, footsteps after you know, print one footstep, one after the other. You start. He make you. He'll probably make you. He'll probably start you with uh, indulging into the mubah too much. That which is mubah, nothing wrong with it. Just so he can keep you away from that which is what sunnah. He'll start off smoother like that until he makes sure that he takes you to shirk and kufr billah. So we have to realize that our iman is not something we can gamble with. It is not something we can put it on the line. There's a book I advise each and every one of you to buy to read. It's also translated in English. I've seen it myself. It is the book at tawdih wal Bayan li Shajarat al-Iman written by Abdul Rahman Nasir al-Si'di rahimahullah. And also the kitab written by a Shaykh Abdul Razak ibn Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad al-Badr. Which speak about, his book is called, Abdul Razak is called Asbabu Ziyadat al-Iman wa Nuqsani. The things that cause the Iman to increase and that which causes it to reduce. With those two books, brothers, it will give you a good insight. Ya ikhwa, the qa'ida is what عَرَفْتُ الشَّرَّ لَا لِلشَّرِّ وَلَكِنْ لِتَوَقِّيهِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفْ فِي الشَّرَّ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ يَقْعَ فِيهِ Knowing good from evil is important. Umar رضي الله عنه, what did he say? تُنْقَضُ عُرَى الْإِسْلَامِ عُرْوَةً عُرْوَةً Islam will be, it will be taken apart bit by bit. And what did he say? إِذَا تَكَلَّمَ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ مَنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفِ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ If he talks about Islam, the one who didn't know Jahiliya. So that's why we need to know what increases the Iman as much as we need to know what reduces the Iman. So that's why it will help us knowing Asbab Ziyad Al-Iman and we also know what Asbab al and that which reduces it. So we can stay away from it. وَلِذَلِكَ حُدَيْفَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُ He was the alim of fitna. 
because of that qaida he said kana nas yas'aluna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam 'anil khair wa kuntu as'aluhu 'anil sharri makhafata makhafata an yudrikani sah he said that the people used to ask the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam only about the good i used to ask him about that so i could what so i could stay away from it so one tries to learn the good and he also learns ma yudaduhu that which opposes it and that which is opposite to it so these two books that i mentioned which is at tawdih wal bayan li shajarat al iman and also the book asbab al ziyadat al iman wa nuqsan both of them with those two books one person a person's iman mashallah they can increase it and stay away from that which will cause their iman to reduce naam نقر بأحوال القيامة كلها وما اشتملته الدار حقا ونشهد We affirm what shall take place of resurrection all of it as well as all contained in the final abode and we bear witness to this The author now he speaks about رحمه الله تعالى أصل من أصولي Al-Iman, one of the fundamental articles of faith, right? And that is Al-Imanu bil yawm al-akhir, believing in the day of the day of judgment. So we believe in everything that's going to happen the day of judgment, every situation in every stage, in details, we believe in it. We believe, for example, because believing of the day of judgment, what falls under it? Al Iman, which is mujmal, and Al Iman, which is mufassal. It's two things. A very comprehensive, generic belief, which is that, okay, I believe in the day of judgment. I know that there's a life after this. That's the, that's the general belief of the day of judgment. The second one is the more specific form of belief of the day of judgment. It is the belief that the stages and the levels and the accounts that are going to take place the day of judgment for example you believe in um fitna to adab al-qabr you believe the trials and the tribulations of the grave and the bliss of the grave you also believe in al-ba'th resurrection you believe nushur hashr the gathering of the people together jaza people being accounted hisab الدواوين, the scrolls, Sirat. You believe in the Sirat that everybody's going to take the path. And Mizan. You believe in the scale. Al Jannah to Nar. You believe in Jannah and you believe in Nar. That is Al Al Iman al Mufassal, the Tafasil, all of that which are found in Al Warida. الكتاب والسنة. That we, we find the kitab and the sunnah. We believe in that. نقر, we affirm that. بأحوال القيامة كلها. All of the situations of the day of judgment. We believe in that. ومشتملته الدار. And we also believe what it consists of. And this is a form of affirmation of what he already said. رحمه الله. The dar here is darul akhirah. Anything that we find in the kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anything that we find in the sunnah, we also believe in that. And we testify to it. And this is him trying to follow the ayah for Surah Al-Baqarah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبِلْ آخِرَتِهُمْ يُقِنُونَ They have certainty of the day of judgment. So we have certainty. We believe that this, all of this with certainty. And how can a person gain certainty of this day? How can he fall under the ayah? Is by studying it in details. Learning the stages. Learning the things that are going to happen after the grave. How it's going to happen. What is going to happen? And this is something a person needs to study. They have to understand the life of the day of judgment. <coughs> From the grave to every single body entering Jannah, all the narrations, the person should bring them together and he should study it.
نعم تفك تفكر بآثار العظيم وما حوت ممالكه العذمى لعلك ترشد Contemplate the manifest signs of the most majestic and all contained in his tremendous kingdoms so you may so you may be guided or aright The author here rahimahullah he speaks about tafakkur to ponder to analyze and look بآثار العظيم the signs of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala which are great in which he has created and he's brought into his existence sometimes people go to buildings and they see the infrastructure and they are baffled and mind boggled they say wow many people they travel to Turkey they see the the ancient and huh? and they are shocked people go to the pyramids in Egypt and they look at this and they're baffled people travel to Dubai and they see buildings and uh, and they see and they are baffled but look how shaitan has diverted them from looking at what is much greater ya ikhwah do you not know this world that we're in today Quran generations after generations have walked this earth this world is older than every creation on it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created it on the way we were talking about a, a water we saw and the color changed and we said that this water yeah the changing of this color of this water it's got a lot of stories the world war one two whatever it saw endured if that water can speak and tell us mashahada that which it saw these are signs of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala tafakkar bi athari al to ponder on the signs of Allah that are around you ya ikhwa if you look at the sky for example Allah made this sky stand bi ghayri amadin tarawnaha there's no pillar holding it it doesn't fall it doesn't drop there is it's standing like that subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah sends rain from it all of it happening Look at the human today when he loses a part of his body and then the doctors give him a new part. It's just never as good as how Allah's one was. Have you not seen some people, they, f- they fix their eyes for them, put another eye in there to see with whatever. It just looks plastic. You can see. It's just... Are you with me? Ya ikhwa, all of this is tafakkar bi athari al-azimi wa ma hawad. Dalika subhanallah, one of the most powerful things that a brother once said to another brother, I was listening to him advising him. He had much, he didn't have much knowledge. But yeah, ikhwah, sometimes you know Allah gives an ilham to a person, he gives them the ability to, to to utter and to speak that which is wise. A brother who felt down and you know who was depressed and sad, he said, Yeah, I'll ask you something. After he gave him a good long reminder, one of the things that he said to him was what? He said to him, Yeah, if I was to ask you today to give me your finger. For a million pounds Would you give it to me? Knowing that all your debts And everything that you're struggling about And you're depressed about Will be paid Would you do that? He said no Two million? No Three million? No Four? No Five? No Six? No Put a price to it No, nothing He said Aki I can't even say you're You're a billionaire walking around You're worth more than a billion You are worth Worth more, more, than, more than all of that You wouldn't do that Sahih It means everything But you were given to it for free Allah has done that Subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya akhwa, Have you not seen a person Who's rich 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 He's got money He's got everything he needs But he's got diabetes Or He's got hepatitis C Or He's got this illness Or that illness So he's not allowed to eat Particular foods but there's a faqir guy who's got no money, nothing, but he's healthy, he can eat everything. And this rich man is jealous of a poor guy who can eat what he wants. There's no illness, he can eat whatever. This man's rich. Are you with me? He's jealous of a poor person. Why? Because however much money he has today cannot buy what this poor man has. Poor man, his health is something Allah gave to him. No one else can give it to him. 
his money can't bring that for him. So tafakkar. بِأَثَارِ الْعَظِيمِ The big signs that are around you. Look at your body. Look at the things that are around you that are happening. And how they are taking place. We're charged for everything, right? Imagine you were charged لِكُلِّ نَفَسِ Every time you breathed, you had to pay for it. Every time you breathed. What did Harun al-Rashid? Was it Harun al-Rashid? One of the leaders, I think it was Harun al-Rashid. A man came up to him, Abu Hazim or something like that. I think he came up to him and he said to him, Yeah? Ibn Samak, yeah? He came and he said to him, Water. You drank the water. There's this narrations and stories mentioned in different turuq, different mentionings. But you, for this cup of water, you would have to give up your kingdom. Half of your kingdom. Would you do it? He said, of course. You won't be, a, this is your life and death situation. You need this water. He said, yes. He said, okay, what about if you sip, you drank that half, you drank the cup of water? But then it got stuck here. It wasn't be able to move. For you to it, for it to be moved from your throat downwards, the the thing that's needed from you is the other remaining part of your kingdom. And he said, "Yes, I will do it." And he, when he said, "I will do it," then the, Ibn Samak said to him, "Destruction leads to a kingdom that's worth a cup of water. That's all it's worth." All you want at the end of the day is to one cup of water to drink, to go for it to go into your body. Sahih. One was for it to be given to you, you gave half of your kingdom for it. And now you have to realize, brothers, Harun al Rashid used to talk to the clouds. He would say to the clouds, Amtiri hunak o hunalik. Go and reign there or there. Fa'inno sayakhruju li kharajuki. Whatever ever you reign, it, the crops will come back from you. Because if it goes to the land of the Muslims, pay attention to this. We went to the lands of the Muslims, the cat will come and it will come to Bayt al Muslimin. And if it was the disbelievers, they will pay jizya. The jizya used to come to the Muslims. So his mulk was where? Sir Harun al Rashid. Very vast. This wasn't one country they governed. They were khulafa. He's saying, I'll give half of all of that just for a whole cup of water. And then he's saying, the other half, I'll give it for the other remaining part. Sah? So, I'll do that. That, what does it show? The value of what you have, the blessings, the kingdom, and is not, the value of this world is nothing. What Allah has given you. So you need to ponder. <coughs> so he said, Tafakkar bi athari al azim wa ma Think of Allah wa Ta'ala as great things that He has created. Wa ma hawat and that which it consists of. Mamaliku al udma Allah's kingdom, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you think of it and you ponder it, how he designed it and he put it together with that inshallah ta'ala you're going to gain guidance and Nabi like Ibrahim what was he doing he was looking at the moon and he was looking at the sun and the stars all of that these are from the things that these are the signs that are it's signs for you to come to guidance as we mentioned yesterday it is what? Ayat which are mushahada. Signs for you to look at. The one who created all of this, designed it, controls it. You see, you're, you're thinking, you're, you're thinking here. What you're doing is, you're thinking. There's a creator. Sorry, there's, before he gets to the conclusion, there's a creator. All of this which I see today, and the way it's running, and the way it's moving, and the way it happens. That this creator has brought me to this world and doesn't have no purpose from me when he has a purpose from everything else around him I as the creation have this tissue next to me right now for a reason huh? I have it here for a reason I wear this watch for a reason I have my mobile phone for a reason and etc Everything you do, you do it for a reason. These great things that are around me, they have a purpose in why the one who did it, did it. So what's the purpose for me? Then the person goes in. He goes on the conquest of finding out the answer to that question. 
and he seeks the knowledge of it, guidance comes to him from it. That's why the author is saying, لَعَلَّكَ تَرْشُدُوا There's a statement Ibn al-Qayyim said in his kitab, Miftahu Dari Sa'ada, the first volume, page 214, he says, وَأَحْسَنُ مَا أُنْفِقَتْ فِيهِ الْأَنْفَاسُ One of the greatest things that a person spends his time and his life in is التفكر في آيات الله It is to ponder and to think about Allah's signs وَعَجَائِبُ الصُّنْعِهِ and the amazement of how Allah made things and He brought about things. وَالْإِنْتِقَالِ مِنْهَا إِلَى تَعَلُّقُ الْقَلْبِ وَالْهِمَّةِ بِهِ دُونَ شَيْءٍ مِنْ مَخْلُقَاتِهِ And then moving on to connecting your heart, having the aspiration to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala besides everything of his, from His creation. So from the greatest things that a person can spend their time doing is pondering on the signs of Allah, He says. And how amazing Allah has brought all of this about. And then from that th thought, your heart automatically becomes connected to him and have loving for him. That's the greatest thing that a person can spend their time to do. <clears throat> we'll stop there, inshallah ta'ala. I will carry on tomorrow, bi al karim. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaytan, and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.